Democracy, Mr. X showcased in the Resident Evil 2 Remake's TGA 2018 gameplay trailer. There was a lot of discussion about this tyrant's overall presence and impact within the game. From his paranoia-inducing footsteps, to his sheer invulnerability to a lot of our weapons, to his overall way of stalking Claire Redfield and Ada Wong throughout the new Resident Evil 2 Remake. But with as much praise that Mr. X has gotten lately, I think it's a good idea to pay homage to the tyrant that came before and after Mr. X, and see how these tyrants shape the current iteration of this tyrant, and see how overall they made such a big impact in the Resident Evil series. Anyways, what is up you guys, this is Heydeva, and in this video we're going to be covering the evolution of the tyrants from the past Resident Evil games, more specifically the first four chronological titles, ranging from Resident Evil 0 to Resident Evil 3, and seeing how these tyrants provide us Resident Evil fans some of the best and terrifying moments we've had playing through these Resident Evil games. But before we get started, if you guys want a quick rundown about Mr. X, please feel free to check out my quick analysis video about this tyrant. I'll leave a card in the top right section of your screen so you guys can check it out. But anyway, starting off, let's do a quick rundown of what a tyrant is, and who were the prominent players that provide us Resident Evil fans so much tension when going up against these behemoths. So the Tyrants were created to be an extremely powerful bioorganic weapon or BOW due to the many counts of research into the T-Virus. These Tyrants are also supposed to have superhuman capabilities while still retaining intelligence that would allow its users to command these creatures at will, giving them specific orders or missions that they would have to carry out. The great example of these Tyrants were both Mr. X and Nemesis, with each Tyrant programmed to have an objective to finish, where we see Mr. X try to acquire a sample of the G-Virus and eliminate any survivors who are in his way, to Nemesis, with his sole objective is to eliminate the remaining members of the stars. Anyways, back to the point. Having started the research for these tyrants, the Umbrella Corporation started by the acquisition of the progenitor virus, to subsequent research and development from the other parts of the Umbrella Corporation's branches around the world. It was also a known fact that the genetic makeup for a person to be a viable tyrant would be 1 in 10 million, which caused some strain for Umbrella to mass produce these tyrants. But luckily for them, one of the Umbrella's executives named Sergei Vladimir was genetically capable of being a tyrant, which allowed Umbrella to clone and mass produce these creatures, also giving them different variations within the subset groups. For example, like I mentioned earlier, Nemesis was one of those tyrants that was given the any parasite that allowed him to retain tremendous intelligence but also viable enough to be controlled by Umbrella to execute the orders that was given to him. So finally, let's start off with our first chronological encounter with the tyrant in the Resident Evil storyline, specifically in Resident Evil 0 and the fight against the proto tyrant. Because during our playthrough in RE0, we got our first glance of the proto tyrant when we see him still inside his culture tank, which this immediately had me thinking that we're gonna go up against this tyrant very soon. Which turns out to be true, when shortly after going down to the Umbrella secret lab, we finally get our first face-to-face -face encounter with this tyrant, standing on top of the rubble, looking down at our character. As we watch this tyrant come closer to Rebecca Chambers, we can quickly see the height difference, where he stands heads above our protagonist, seeing him twitch as he sets his eyes on the Lone Stars member. With his grotesque appearance and naked body, to his exposed heart and spinal column, and in his enlarged right arm with claws, we knew we were in for a terrifying experience. Seeing this tyrant attempt to slash away at Rebecca with some unnatural speed, covering a large distance with one swipe, we the players had to be careful when facing this tyrant. With his way of attacking made him almost seem like he's uncoordinated, as he leaps towards our character from one end of the room to the other. In the end, this can be used as a strategy to allow Rebecca to attack from behind, hitting his weakness with his exposed spine. But even after being defeated by Rebecca, we once again see this tyrant emerging from a water reservoir, showcasing his large claws, but luckily we have Billy Cohen on our side with this battle. As we go up against this tyrant with both of our protagonists, it was both a blessing and a curse, as we still see this tyrant still able to leap towards our protagonist, covering a large amount of distance in a short amount amount of time. Where now, even with the extra help from our other character, it was still difficult to not let our other protagonist get hit when the tyrant makes his moves, since now we're placed in a more cramped and narrow battle arena compared to the more open environment when first going up against this tyrant. I even tried to see if I could just leave the area and see if the tyrant would disappear if I go back, but unluckily for me, the tyrant was still there, waiting to get his chance to pounce on our characters. Anyways, overall, this tyrant was pretty much the precursor to his later iterations in the Resident Evil series, where we see the future tyrants of the Resident Evil series improve upon this monster in front of us. 
but even in its raw form, this portal tyrant was still menacing, where it was stated to still have intelligence that is comparable to a regular human being, which would be the foundation that Umbrella would use to help control the future tyrants, giving them missions to finish. But as we move on from the proto tyrant, we see our next chronological encounter with this monster in Resident Evil 1, where we see Albert Wesker introduce either Chris Redfield or Jill Valentine to the hulking behemoth inside his culture tank. But this time, we get a quick cinematic of the tyrant, where it showcases some of his features, from his razor sharp claws to his loud and beating heart. This version of the tyrant is a step up from his previous iteration, where we see it as a much more polished tyrant compared to the proto tyrant in Resident Evil 0. Not twitching or having his spine exposed as a weakness, we now have this monster ready to do battle with our protagonist. Whether it be in his first battle arena, where we're put in a smaller environment, which doesn't give us players much wiggle room, to his second encounter, where now we have much more room to navigate around. Anyways, with this iteration of the tyrant, we see him jump out of a hole to face the remaining survivors of stars, showcasing his ability to sprint towards us players and slash away at us like no other. But in the end, we get to see the infamous rocket launcher ending, where we see this tyrant blown into pieces, which is eerily similar to the ending that Mr. X got during his final form in the original Resident Evil 2. You lose, big guy. Anyways, talking about Mr. X, let's finally break down this monster and see how far the evolution of the Tyrant has come to this point in the Resident Evil series. So like I mentioned earlier, making his debut in the original Resident Evil 2, we were introduced to the infamous Mr. X when we see him dropped off above the RPD station. Being sent there by Umbrella to retrieve a sample of the G-Virus and eliminating anyone who would be in his way during his mission. With this iteration of the Tyrant, we see Mr. X sport his trench coat limiter, which was absent from the previous two Tyrants that we just covered. But the main reason as to why he's wearing one is to prevent him from further mutations, but also giving him some added protections against heavy fire from any weapons. Anyway, with this iteration of the Tyrant, we see him follow our protagonist either Leon or Claire throughout our journey in the original Resident Evil 2. From him following us to the third floor of the RPD station, to him bursting through the wall not just once, but twice in a short span. With this version of the Tyrant, he is much more refined compared to the Proto Tyrant. Anyways, by the end of the game, when he's finally in his final form, we get to see this Tyrant perform similar acts of attacks like his Tyrant Brethren, where he's able to slash away at his players from a far distance, which is very comparable to the Proto Tyrant, because with this move, he can cover a lot of ground that we the players have made when trying to distance ourselves from this monster. In the end, Mr. X was a big step up when it came to the Tyrants, where he still retains a lot of the traits from the previous versions, but refined in a way that would allow its users to control him that would assist this Tyrant to achieve his mission. This of course would only be a setup or foundation to the next Tyrant that I'm going to be discussing on this video, Nemesis. With this Tyrant making his debut in Resident Evil 3, we got to see the pinnacle of the capabilities that a Tyrant can do at this point in the Resident Evil series. Seeing him ambush both Jill Valentine and Brad in front of the RPD station, where we see him sport his iconic trench coat limiter, appearing much more sentient compared to his other tyrant brethren, where now he's programmed to hunt down and eliminate the remaining stars members. What's more apparent was his ability to speak when confronting our protagonist. Stars. Anyways, with this tyrant, we see him perform some of the most terrifying aspects that we haven't seen in just one tyrant combined. From his ability to sprint and run towards Jill, where he's able to run much faster than our protagonist, to his ability to follow us players from room to room, not giving us a break from this constant terror. Because as we traverse through the many areas of Raccoon City, we can never feel safe with this tyrant, because he may just pop out at any given moment. But to top it all off, he's also able to wield a rocket launcher, because with this monster, compared to his other tyrant brethren, he's much more intelligent, building on top of each subsequent tyrant that we've seen to this point of the Resident Evil series. Umbrella was able to achieve this like I mentioned earlier by implanting this tyrant with any parasite which allowed him to retain tremendous intelligence which allows him to wield weapons to achieve his mission. Anyways if you guys want a more in-depth look at Nemesis or some of the other monsters in the Resident Evil series please feel free to check out my other Resident Evil videos on my channel. I'll leave a card on the top right section of your screen so you guys can check it out.
but with all the different versions of the tyrants, we finally get our conclusion with the latest iteration of Mr. X in the new Resident Evil 2 remake. Seeing him upgraded to a version that is very reminiscent of Nemesis from RE3, with his ability to follow you throughout the environment where he's able to open doors or climb upstairs, to his ability to soak up heavy fire from our weapons. It also doesn't help that he can be alerted of your presence when you shoot your weapons at any of the monsters around the RPD station, because once alerted, Mr. X will start to march closer and closer to us players, giving us a paranoia inducing footsteps. letting us players know his presence, because this iteration of Mr. X is a huge upgrade from his original Resident Evil 2 counterpart. But with the new Resident Evil 2 just around the corner, it still makes you wonder if or when will Capcom officially announce the development of a new Resident Evil 3 remake, because only God knows what kind of terror nemesis will be in a new remake, building on top of the already formidable version of himself from the original Resident Evil 3. Just imagining him break through more doors or walls, or seeing him use different weapons would be a great addition to his already great foundation. Anyways, in the end, starting from the prototyrant, to his evolution to Nemesis, we got to see how formidable each tyrant was. Even in their raw form, we still had to be wary of their presence. But as we delve into the new Resident Evil 2 remake, we'll be facing the newest version of Mr. X and see how far he's come along compared to the previous tyrants that we've faced in the past. Because as history stands, we can only hope that Capcom builds on top of this new version of Mr. X and showcases a tyrant that we have yet to see from any Resident Evil title at this point in the series. Anyways, what did you guys think of the many tyrants that you've faced and how they made an impact for the Resident Evil series as a whole. Please let me know in the comment section down below. I'd like to see other RE fans out there share their love for these monsters and how they brought us a great but terrifying time playing in their respective titles. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching my Tyrant Analysis video. If you guys did enjoy my content, please feel free to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you guys can be updated when I post new Resident Evil content. Again, thank you guys so much and as always, you guys have a great rest of your day and this is Hey Deva signing out.